Contributions, and we did uh, communicate through emails. And uh, uh, but this this is uh, for most of you that the uh, first time to to get to know. Um, the time is I I understand that uh, for Muslims who have prayers, it needs to be before 11:45. Yes. And for others may possibly continue by themselves. So best thing is to do as much as we can do uh, by 11.45, because even if someone says something, then, then all other players may be praying. So uh, that, uh, basically we try to, to, to do in a super uh, quick in trying to convey on point. And, uh, uh, let me first uh, introduce Rao, Rao Kim Kim Chi from Hong Kong. Uh, she, she presented uh, on behalf of uh, Ecology Seminar along, along with me in a plenary session uh, yesterday. And uh, uh, this, this book was launched you know, you know uh, I, I think two days ago, and uh, I just today opened up and uh, found that she, two of the articles are by her. Comparative study on seven emerging developing countries uh, with uh, three other persons, and by herself, taking uh, Sabala, Sabalutan, Sabartan, correct? Sabartan and so, so meaning a lower class, right? Uh, Sabartan and ecological perspectives on sustainability in China, which is a critical view on uh, so called Chinese miracle of, uh, of, of success. Um, would you like to say something to them? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm very glad to be part of the ecology panel because uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Yukio has worked very hard to put us together. But I hope that um, I, I feel that uh, well, my main point is uh, that among NGOs and social movements, they talk a lot about socio-economic justice, uh, 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 but then uh, we find a lack of uh, concern. Uh, or integration with the question of ecological justice. Uh, as for um, people discussing environmental justice, etc., many of them would be middle class and uh, they fail to take into account the interests of the lower classes. So my, 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 uh, my view is that uh, we should uh, uh, take both ecological justice and socio-economic justice together uh, interlink them so that we can find a way uh, to uh, confront the problems of modernization or marketization. And I hope that from this panel, after hearing your presentations, we can uh, uh, follow up, uh, because the follow up is most important, so that we know each other and we can continue to work uh, to, for the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Yes, but given that this super time limitation, uh, this kind of, <laughs> this is a good example, you know, that at least we can get initial ideas introduced. But by the time, you know, we, no one can convince uh, others of, of own argument or own knowledge uh, within such a limited uh, time. So this is the yeah, start point, and I, I suggest that perhaps we can we can create an email group of this, uh, you know, today's participants and um, uh, uh, continue our relations and uh, uh, de develop our uh, mutual understanding by sending mails, 
individually and collectively. So, you agree? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Inchi. So, someone who, who definitely want to go for prayer at 11.45, we must, must present first. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Sorry for, you know, asking you to this super question. This all right? It's okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Yeah. 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 Create social capital mm -hmm. in community experience from independent community energy landfill to convert of waste into energy alternative in Kendari Southeast Sulawesi. This is program is start uh, from local government in Kendari. It so start in 1999. Yeah, this is best practice and our lesson learned about uh, how to create social capital in community. Next. Uh, I see bread uh, with uh, essential point. The first karstik of Puatu landfill and there 100 household occupation. The almost occupation is scavenger and 102 ton garbage per day and then they create networking and trust each other between uh, between community and local government. And there, this early picture showed about uh, the characteristic of uh, TPA Kuatu, tempat pembuangan sampah Kuatu. Next, oh uh, sorry sorry, and the result so uh, the empowerment will run if many initiate by the government, the local government. So it's important uh, result about uh, the TPA Puato. Next, the second, uh, the study found is Puato Landfill community. Social activities are tightly integrated with social networking, trust built among them, and social norms. The, the third, uh, community experience in Puato Landfill in managing was is closely associated with the ability of networking between them and the government. And and then community of Puatu Landfill, most of which are scavenger, have high intensity of the meeting, so that communication between neighbors goes well. Emerge in religious social activities, recitation and community service, patrolling, recitating, wedding party, instructor building, and so on. And next, interesting finding in the. In the project, the people trust among Puatu Landfill community is that they trust more in bank on banker, garbage manager, volunteers such as teachers and students rather than on politician. Uh, they they don't like a politic or politician. I don't know how, but it's uh, interesting found about uh, they want they don't like about politicians or politics and. In the recommendation of my paper, of a long term, local government should be used in domination uh, of community landfill. And that community needs to be capacity building, such as networking, and entrepreneurship skill, including NGO involved and political education. Thank you, Dr. Oki, for giving me a chance. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. And the paraffin, and then strategies and then solution and the end is impact on ecological change. <coughs> the, the, the realities of Chodiri River Bank 
Yes, the Chede River Bank stretch along 7 kilometers, cover 210 hectare or six a half percent of total area of the city of Yogyakarta. Population density is 200, uh, ranging, ranging 200 and 350 to 350. <coughs> it consists of informal uh, or spontaneous or speculative settlement with ambiguity in land and housing tenure and stretch along the center of the city is close to commercial district and basic community facilities. Most of uh, residents work on this area. Uh, threat and pressure is post environment, environmental pressure, flooding and penetration of capital. So, <coughs> if, the, if we speak about this community, the actors, the actors <coughs> uh, is resident, private, state or government, intellectual divided into humanistic ideology and technocratic ideology and NGO. Uh, the paradigm, <coughs> the resident regard that their settlement is place for life and work. The strat their strategy is life and work with marginal infrastructure. Their solution is spontaneous or informal speculative settlement and bit river side dive. And impact on ecological change is deterioration of environmental settlement, but safe help in housing and its facilities. Uh, private actors, the paradigm is uh, <coughs> place for business investigation. <laughs> I mean this settlement. And their strategy is development of business district. Their solution is <coughs> uh, riverside apartment. Uh, or hotel or sub houses. The impact is <coughs> beautification of riverside, but loss or reduce groundwater and rise social conflict, and then lock access to land, housing, and basic services. The state of government, their paradigm is uh, <coughs> place for production and distribution of power. The strategy is control and use and developing settlement with legal instrument. Solution, the solution is green bed, riverside deck, and upgrading and urban renewal include, include uh, built Rusunawa or rental multi-story housing for low income. The impact is increased quality of settlement and access to housing and basic infrastructure, but rise social conflict. Uh, intellectual with <coughs> humanistic ideology See to the river bank settlement as holistic issues. Uh, their strategy is integrating physical development with economy, social, and cultural development. Uh, their solution is green kampung, uh, I mean uh, settlement, cooperative housing, and community of liberation. Impact <coughs> on ecological change, increased quality of housing, infrastructure, and independence of the resident that ignored by government. Interlock dual with technocratic ideology. Today, <coughs> uh, River Bank Settlement as technical problem. Uh, the strategy is environmental engineering. So, at solution is green bed or conser conservation areas without building or house. Uh, the impact is increase environmental quality, but rise social conflict and lock access to line, housing, and their services. NGOs <coughs> see the settlement as arena for empowerment and fighting for social justice. Uh, their strategy is support residents to solve environment and settlement, settlement problem by themselves. Their solution is build up facilities for education, health care, sanitation, and social gathering. <coughs> uh, Im impact on ecological, increase basic infrastructure and independent of tradition. resident, I mean. <coughs> Build social institution, but ignored by government. Next, this is the <coughs> uh, river river side of the settlement. Next, next, this is the map of the Chody River settlement. <coughs> In the center is Chody River settlement. Okay, next, 
the, the more detail in <coughs> map. Okay, next. This is this is a map of Kampung Cerdik Gondolayu in the north and area view. Next, this is Kampung Gembelakan in the center uh, in the in the middle and area view. Next. Ratnakan and <coughs> at our view next. Okay, this is example of squatter settlement. It's occupied <coughs> illegally, uh, abandoned stainless, stainless cemetery. Okay, next. <coughs> uh, before mid <coughs> 1960s, mid uh, several part of the river bank work garbage disposal. Okay, next. It's the same location in recent condition. Okay, next. In the north up area in the backyard. Okay, yeah. uh, next. This is the front, uh, front back, uh, on the street of this area. Uh, I mean, this area previously is garbage disposal too, but occupied by upper level. So the water is not only the poor or the lower level, but the upper level. Okay, next. It is the <coughs> panorama of uh, labor side. Okay, next. It's the same in more detail. Next. It's the same. Next. It is, uh, this is the diet built by government, cooperation with uh, resident and support by army or in program calibrasi okay next is the same next next okay next uh, the issue among uh, the rumor among the president now is that their settlement will become river, uh, riverside apartment or riverside hotel so this is the hot issue in Jakarta uh, so it is maybe the place like this is uh, ideal, type, ideal place for develop to apartment or hotel, riverside hotel. Okay, next. In detail, next. 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 This is the program of beautification riverside. Okay, next. Yes, okay, next. Uh, the layer of pathway in in kampung next 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 okay next uh, this is postcard or uh, post uh, item card kurunda okay next A beautification or riverside next next okay next uh, this is the <coughs> uh, settlement paid by Mangamichaya, a priest and intellectual and uh, independent activist also. This is built in uh, 1985 and complete in 1988. Uh, this is the complete condition. Okay, next. next uh, okay, we can see that this the settlement built co cooperative and with struktur uh, semi permanen or not apa not from 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 break or uh, okay next this is same condition next this is condition in 2002 next this is the recent condition you can see that this building is permanent building almost all the building is uh, permanent building. Okay, next. Okay, next. This detail of uh, apart apartment in quotes. Okay, next. This is the example of Rusunawa or <coughs> multi-story housing for low 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 in income. Okay, the next. It is the <coughs> the other. Okay, next. Is the uh, the other. Okay, next. Uh, this Rusunawa bit uh, on diet riverside. Next, uh, bit ho uh, hotel in the area of Kampung. Now, uh, it <coughs> make uh, 
hot isu in Yogyakarta itu uh, the hotel in the kampung uh, di crash water ground ground water I mean <coughs> and at protest by protest by uh, complaint by the resident oke okay. oke okay. the same hotel in the front of uh, in the front area oke okay, the next the other hotel the next so <coughs> uh, So the river bank <coughs> regularly uh, fl- flood uh, from Merapi apa Kulkang. So not not water. Excuse me. Okay. If, if all of uh, you go to Greya by 11:45, mm. you need to finish. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Sorry to. Ah oh, yes. Yes. No, next. Uh, next. This is the apa? figure of flood. Flood. Next. This is the same. Next, yes, the next. Ah. This is the part of capital capitalist penetration. The developer bought the area in the Chode River Bank and close to <coughs> uh, lock access to house, uh, to land for low income. Okay, next, in the other area. Next, okay, in the area. So my conclusion is that. Not only flood to the change ecology ecology in so to the river, but uh, capitalist penetration also. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So next person, please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon to all of us. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Rayo. Uh, I just gr- I graduated from Bandung, which is the city that you previously uh, see, the lovely city of Bandung. But right now I'm continuing my study in Australia in the University of Melbourne. My major is Master of Environment. So this ecology theme is really fit to my profile. Um, I would like to mention the title, the Marine Litter Prevention from Asia and Africa to Globalized World. So this, with this theme, the ecology theme and the Asian African Conference, I would like to highlight the marine litter, which is the ocean trash, pollution and so on. And especially for our, in Indonesia, our new government focus also in the marine uh, topic, marine and maritime topic. So I think this is the, in a, for Indonesia it's a very, interested topic. Next one please. This is today's outline. First, I will uh, briefly discuss about the background of marine litter itself and then continue to the impact and more furthermore about the facts and findings and then the highlight position is in, in the case studies about Asia and, and Africa and also the last is about global partnership. Next. Just only uh, mention what is marine litter about from the unit It mentioned that marine litter is consists of any persistent manufacture and uh, solid material discarded, disposed in marine and coastal environment. So it's not only plastic; it can be considered as a all kind of waste discarded to the ocean and to the marine environment. Next one. So this is the source of marine litter. Marine litter mainly sourced from a land-based. So actually, our activity on land is derived 80% of the marine litter uh, pr- presence and the, the other 20% is from sea based such as from the ships and from the fishing activities and so on. Next one. And this is just only the sources of marine litter with the highest percentage is from household, from our activity, daily activity. Next. And this is about the impacts. There are at least three impacts on environment from marine litter. The first, was, first one is ingestion. So animals, like marine animals, uh, um, may mistaken to eat their food, but they eat plastic. So that's the case of the ingestion. And then the next one is entanglement or boost fishing. As you can see there, there is a uh, sea lion, which is caught by the, the, the fishing gear and kind of that. And also the habitat damage, not only the fish or the animals, but also the coral reefs and so on. So it's mainly impacting the marine environment. Next. 
And this is about the facts and findings. So from 2002 until 2013, there are slightly increase of the marine uh, plastic production. So main, main of the ma marine litter is come from plastic, and this is the amount of increasing global plastic production. So it's making it higher and higher. Even if we go through from the history, it's 50 years since the plastic production started, and until now it always increased. Next. And this is the fact on the world. So if you can see 100% of the plastic production, by 52.9% is come from Asia and Africa. So that's the big issue on Asia and Africa since this continent uh, produce plastic more than any other, other continent in total. Next one. All right, so this is the top 10 sources of ocean plastic wastes. So if you can see that the red dot, if it is bigger, so it's much more plastic produced and in the ocean. So if you can click one more, there is the, uh, the million. So China is the first uh, country, the, the top number one country that produced the most ocean plastic weights by 8.8 .8 million. Number two is Indonesia and number three is Philippines. And those all top 10 is come from Asian and African country. And if we want to extend this list in the top 20, so next one, this is the list of top top 20 from number one to number 20. If you can click one more, this is the, the yellow one is uh, mark the Asian countries. So from all lists, there are all many Asian countries which uh, generate plastic waste of, of, out of the 20 countries. And if you click one more, the green one is the uh, African countries. So both Asia and Africa from top, top 20 Click one more, there's 18 out of 20 of the top 20, it's come from Asia and Africa. So this makes the marine litter issue on this continent is really important to be noticed. Next one. In the global context, the, these marine litter can concentrate in several places, which in those five, we call it gyre. Gyre is like the, the plastics or the other marine litter comes together with the current of the ocean and they concentrate it in five different places which is the North Pacific Gyre between Japan and the United States they are consist of the most uh, concentrated plastic so it, it is possible to make a new island in those area next one so we can focus in this this uh, research is focusing on these case studies uh, we choose four of the countries which represent in Asia and Africa, two from Asia and two from Africa, the Philippines, South Korea, Kenya, and Nigeria. So one by one, let's talk together about these case studies. The first one, the first one is Philippines. I just want to share about the, these, what case studies in Philippines they do in the name of uh, marine litter prevention. In the Philippines, as you can see by the picture, they do the recycling discarded fishing nets into a carpet tile. So in the Philippines, there are many of fishing communities. They collaborate with the uh, commercial carpet tile, which the fishing communities collect those of the fishing nets, the discarded fishing nets that pollute the ocean, and they clean up the, the, the string, the, the thing, the, the discarded fishing nets. They, use the community like the local community the fishing community and so on and they produce the clean fishing nets and they ship those nets into the to the uh, commercial carpet tile they turn that waste into the commercial carpet tile that could be distributed global so it's really um, interesting example because it's empowered the local community to make something that have to be become a waste and pollute this ocean and so on to become the commercial capital that you can use in your daily life. Next, the second study is on South Korea. They have the uh, program which educate children by using Marie Litter Activity Book. So they promote the awareness, not only to the people, but from the lower level, from the children itself. They make a book which is mainly Firstly, they meet in Korean language, but right now they can. They already have the English version, and they promote this book to the uh, the society in the school that 
they want to increase the awareness of the children and start from the children we 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 have to look at the marine we have to conserve the ocean and so on from the pollution of the marine nature so this is interesting case studies in South Korea next one go to Africa we have Kenya in Kenya they do the program for turning wash up channels into art so in Kenya they have a beach in the beach if people go to the beach and they use the sandals and if they go to the beach they put the sandals somewhere and they go to the beach for swimming and so on and they forgot the sandals and the sandals is washed up through the beach so if people in Kenya collect those sandals that left behind in the ocean they collect together and they have a program that make an art from the from the sandals itself they just put a glue through the sandals and they make a creation like a big from the big this is kind of the sculpture of the giraffe it's a very big huge sculpture and they also make a very tiny thing like such as like the keychain and so on so they can turn recycle those sandals into something that people can buy can can use it as an art next one in Nigeria uh, they are establishing a recycle collection service by using the cargo bikes. So in people in Nigeria, it's similar to the uh, settlement. If, you, if we talk about the settlement in Nigeria, there are very uh, many settlements in such a small area. So people like a truck or cars cannot go into their roads. So the thing that can move into the roads is just only the bike. So they people in Nigeria collect these uh, recycled bottled plastic and so on using the uh, bicycle like tree cycle and they collect those the recycle collection and recycle waste to the collection and then they can distribute well so the distribution of the waste can specifically focus on the recycle and these waste can be turned into the other material from plastic so these for example shows that you can you can who want to pray time now. All right. Last this is the last set for me. Global partnership. So this all of these case studies can uh, can gather together to make a bigger in impact. So if people inspired by these activities, they could make their own uh, their own example or their own program using this example I believe those four example can be easily adopted here in Indonesia especially on other Asian and African countries so that we as an Asian African community can contribute to the world with the prevention of the marine nature next slide so this is thank you uh, I'm from actually I'm from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry Indonesia and I'm going to talk about the uh, result of uh, our assessment about the role of the trees and forests in building community resilience against drought in Indonesia. Uh, as, as we know, drought are impacting on the forests and forest dependent people in Indonesia uh, for today and tomorrow. So drought in Indonesia is becoming a routine disaster. <coughs> and uh, growth is bring impact for the environment and human livelihood. So we make uh, we conducted the study in the four districts in Indonesia because we know the Indonesia is very diverse. <coughs> so uh, one of our target area is in Java, uh, in Yogyakarta uh, province, and also in East uh, Java. And another is in uh, East Nusa Tenggara, eastern part of the Indonesia, the poorest province in Indonesia, and uh, the last one in Kapuasulu in West Kalimantan. So uh, the object, the objective of the study is uh, to see uh, uh, intercorrelation or intersection between uh, people, trees, and drought. So uh, we found that the prolonged dry session cause uh, drought and lead to water deficit and forest fire. Actually, if, uh, uh, if uh, actually now the, the big issue uh, related with the environment in Indonesia is haze. Actually, the drought is still in correlation with the fire, especially in Sumatra and Kalimantan, but not in Java and East Nusa Tenggara.
So that's why we cannot generalize of the result of our assessment. Uh, but uh, the most important I want to share about the how to uh, respond of the uh, uh, drought in Indonesia uh, as a government or as uh, the uh, main actor in the environment in Indonesia should learn about the uh, traditional wisdom of the local community because the uh, uh, traditional uh, wisdom of the local community in each area is different is different and then for the uh, decision maker in the national level or in the district or provincial level should uh, bring the traditional knowledge of the local community as a root of the uh, uh, the regulation uh, related to community resilience uh, for the drought and the uh, climate change actually as the whole of the issue so uh, finding relevant to the social action including the uh, traditional skill culture and knowledge of the local community can enrich and help enhance their survival at separate road actually the local community have a skill and knowledge how to respond of the drought so we can uh, make intervention to the uh, to the, their uh, uh, local wisdom or local knowledge so we have to support yeah we have to support of the their local knowledge in response of the drought and tradition or culture also motivate yeah, motivate them to create uh, to innovate to make innovation uh, in response of the drought for example i found in java they make the rotation of the agriculture in the dry session is different if uh, in in the uh, 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 rainy session so they actually they have also uh, knowledge and skill how to uh, for example they know about when is the dry session is coming from the voice of the insect it's very interesting uh, and uh, I found also in uh, finding a uh, very interesting finding uh, in Java actually so when uh, in, in dry session they try to plant the grass not the vegetable or uh, uh, fruit why because the grass is for the livestock and livestock is is, is like a, a bank for them so they, they sell the livestock when they have uh, no money at all and the culture also is uh, uh, influence of the response of the communities for example in uh, kalimantan the local people or indigenous people in kalimantan is daya uh, they, uh, the impact of the drought in Kalimantan is forest fire. The impact of the drought in Java and East Nusa Tenggara, Nusa Tenggara is water deficit. It's different, different uh, impact to the local community from the uh, drought, uh, dry session, prolonged dry session. So, and Dayak people also uh, have a traditional knowledge how to prevent and how to the, the the reduce of the forest fire, natural forest fire. But uh, in the past, we as a government officer, we we never uh, see uh, their traditional knowledge how to uh, uh, solve the ecological problem. So now we have to consider about the. Uh, traditional knowledge of uh, local community in formulating uh, regulation related with the uh, uh, management of natural resources. That is the message uh, from me, from actually from us, uh, with my uh, our college is uh, Mrs. Titi, yeah, for especially for the decision maker in the uh, national level and also in the province and district level. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so this is basically uh, the, the presentation that we're using. Well, actually, there are ways uh, how we look at it, but of course, we're just looking at the time frame. We have to uh, shorten a lot of stuff. Uh, the, the theory itself was actually called static city that uh, I've been trying to work on uh, since around 2007, 2008, up to now. Uh, and uh, actually, what we, where we are now is that we're using this method of a reverse butterfly effect. So what happens is that it will look jumpy, but actually one and other things, they are connected to each other. And once we found the differentiation, we can reverse it. That's, that's one of the basic ideas. Next. Okay, next. Okay, so basically it's, it's starting as of the context of ecology. So the world as a, a natural human being, then the uh, destruction of our mother nature means destruction of the human being. Okay, so what happened is that for the whole world here, we, we, this is a picture of NASA, this is not really a, a, a proper, so maybe we can just do next. Nah, this one is much better. So what happened is that out of the whole world here, people only concentrate in very few places. And, but but the, the, all the goods that are produced from the whole ecosystem transfer to here and consume them. So, uh, in, in a way, we are trying to understand these little dots, and how can we, we under, uh, uh, how can we make it more effective and efficient so that we don't have to produce as much as energy and uh, as much as waste. Thanks. Okay, so the basic thing is that the, the economy uh, turmoil, uh, the, the catastrophic turmoil, ecological, it, it happened because uh, generation after generation cannot see the paradox between. Like you said, uh, uh, like, like your research done, it's between the, the uh, uh, justice in, in terms of socio-economy and justice in, in, in sense of ecology. They have to be like go together. Okay, so this is one of the way that, that we, we, we do. Uh, so this is the group of three. We call it, this is a method, the group of three. What happens is that we, we divide these. This is just a summary of the whole thing. It's like a, a, a long thing. But Basically, we can this. Uh, this is the GDP, and we have this a uh, high GDP and low GDP on the x-axis and on the y-axis, high population and low population. So that's the thing that we don't only see the economy as how big it is, but also as uh, the qualitative in terms of how can it perform in each uh, human being that lives in the certain agenda. Okay, so uh, we we are very. Uh, uh, driven by the, the brick issues. So this was uh, one, one. The first one is that the group of three today, we call it the group of three. So these are the countries. And then we have the group of three as it was prophesized by Goldman Sachs on the three uh, paper, global economic paper on 2050, where the brick will move back from year to year. And this is where the G7 will, G6 actually will, will remain, G6 plus Japan. And this is the, the, other, the next 11 next. Now we can substitute this into this, uh, the, our uh, previous theory. It's actually published in the Banding Spirit Ecological Book a few years ago, the Green Books. Uh, we, we put down the base theory here. So what happens is that we are there, there is an a, 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 a organization called GAWC based on uh, Washington DC that they, they imply how they can manage cities by what they call the alpha and beta cities. Meaning that uh, there are cities that, are, uh, that can uh, have political uh, uh, strength larger than the other cities. So hence we have alpha cities and beta cities. You can read more on, in reference on the ecological, the green book. Uh, edited by Darwis and uh, UQO. So if we substitute this into this, we'll have this, uh, the, the one on the board is the alpha city, and the one without the board is the beta city. And then we have these cities. Next. Uh, but in, in general, if we conclude from here, it's actually group one is USA plus brick. Uh, group two is a G7, which is a G8 minus Russia, because Russia moved there minus USA plus K. K stands for South Korea. And group three is the next 11 minus K because South Korea origin came from here. So next. Okay, next. 
Now, how do we move from here? But uh, what happened is that uh, in, in our further analysis, this is this doesn't really happen like this in reality. What happened is that the move, the, the city actually moving from one way to the other. How? I, I can explain it to you in the next chart. Okay, so this is like uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, in relevance to city and population, there are usually three different uh, uh, three different uh, uh, gauge that's used. First, the city as a proper population. So like for example in Jakarta we call it the DKI as a city proper. Next. And then the urban uh, area population, which consists of the sub-cities, we call it Jabodetabek here. Next. And then agglomeration, which impacts the other. These these figures will really tell us what happened to the cities and how they are uh, characterized. Next. Now, this, when we put all together with, with the, the city proper urban area agglomeration, will have this, this characteristic. Uh, let, let, let us start with one example, Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo is uh, giving like a, one of the most consistent graph. Because why, as the, city, as the geography uh, widened, the population also rise up. So this means that the, the Tokyo is uh, actually doing agglomeration from side to side, from center to the edge. However, an uh, example like, uh, for instance, uh, Jakarta, Jakarta here, you can see that there are a missing connection here. Because uh, one way, one, one of the possible ways that, because Jakarta is starting to make uh, the, the uh, outer ring cities, but it doesn't really show much, so that's when there's someone missing. And then the other thing is that, uh, uh, I don't know if this coincidence, but most of the G7, they don't have the exact uh, uh, data for the city proper, which is the first thing, first. So it's more that uh, we argue that probably more got to do with the political agenda, that because if the data shows up, then we can see how the, uh, uh, the, the uh, EU cities is actually shrinking. Thanks. So, so that, uh, so go back to the, So now from this, the, we, the, the only set of data that we can use, which is consistent, is only the middle one. Now, but this is not in, in, the, in the proper order. Next, whatever if we do it in the proper order from number one to number twenty, this is very interesting because then we have the real set of data where you can see how people agglomerate. And out of the set of data that was already presented, we can see the addition of three sub city, uh, three beta cities, uh, Karachi, Manila, and uh, Delhi, and one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not even on the list, on the economic list, on the group three list. Uh, and then next. So the conclusion is next. Uh, what happened with this? We can conclude that. Looking at the characterization of the, the urban agglomeration, we can see that the group one focus city is forever agglomerating with uh, Tokyo and New York and etc. etc. And the group two is actually degenerating, and the group three is something we don't know yet. And problem starts from where we have cities from the group three, which is this one, trying to be uh, managed using the theories important from here to there. And that's where the catastrophic of, uh, uh, of the city happens. Next. Okay, uh, this, is, this is just a one quick set, uh, question. Next. 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 This is the agglomeration of Tokyo. Okay, stop. Okay, now as you can see, Tokyo is agglomerating forevermore. Means that they are expanding forevermore. This is strange why, because Japan as a nation, the people, their, their uh, native population is actually decreasing. The only way they can maintain the population is because they have a, a good will of a free immigration, especially uh, from coming from a, 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 a G7. But what happens, so how come Tokyo can forever agglomerate? This is the answer, this is Japan. We can have the Keihan uh, Takio uh, Belt, that consists of Tokyo, Yokohama, Kyoto, Osaka, especially Osaka and Tokyo. What happened is that uh, in order for them to be able to do this for agglomerating, they actually sucking the population of the whole nation to this 
area. Hence, that's why Kyoto becoming less and less dense. So this 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 uh, this this shows that, that uh, this is not done by us. This is done by AMO uh, based on the Netherlands. They explain it even in the global world, where actually population are migrating to this is Asia, to Asia from the whole world. That's where we can see the concentration of the people and the, how the city has become. Next. Okay, now agglomeration is also means daily commuting. Daily commuting means massive energy use. This is where the problem is for the people that are on the third uh, group of the cities, group of trees. Okay, agglomeration means this is the US city that based on the oil, the oil based uh, car. Or even the EU, when you have the MRT, still MRT runs in a huge uh, suspense of energy. Next, next. Okay, so so the condition can only be achieved through a state of a common sovereignty prosperity, a state where everybody can equally aware and able to make radical change. Next. So and then this this is these are some of the samples that we don't get in the Western cities. The culture. The heavy population, except the one on the on the on the uh, on the first uh, quarter of the earlier graph, and then the missing population. This is where the missing population are because why they are informal citizen. They don't they don't include into the, the population data. And next, so what happened is that uh, this is uh, one of the, the case that we, we have been studying, and this is the first uh, one of the earlier uh, hypothesis that. Uh, the, the, the thing that we need to do is densification, not agglomeration or deglomeration. Why? Because actually, this uh, missing key, low income, we are next. If we focus on this one first, we have the middle low income that can only travel in and out of the city center using the uh, public uh, public transport. But the happen is the public, what happens public transport is not there yet. In here, in, in, in say, for instance, in Jakarta. Next, and forevermore, the low income, they don't even have the power to travel in and out. So they have to live inside the city. And they become the, 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 uh, the, 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 the informal settlements. Next. Okay, so for the, the question of that our generation must answer to this, definitely not exclusively of the ecological or it is political community, it's all the ism that is combined. Okay, so basically, the the, the out of those the, the, the base theory that we, we published was actually published in the Banu Spirit uh, on 2012. Uh, the paper was entitled "From Urban Studies to Urban Architecture: Critics of the Use of Eurocentric Theories in Shaping the Emerging Cities." They have the all fundamental theories. Um, I'll probably send it to you in the true events. Thanks. So uh, and then this is one of the work that we did for uh, for Jakarta. How do we imply all these strategies in reality? Okay, so this is the, 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 the Jakarta. Thanks. So this is uh, the main uh, highway. Next. And then uh, this is the, the latest highway edition. Of, it's already done. So what happened is that uh, uh, our study urged to first we do a normalization on the transport system. Uh, and one way to do that is that to lock Jakarta in this outer perimeter, and then we have the transit-oriented uh, development on this end. But the idea is to prepare a way to create a static city. So in times, peop uh, people will travel less to the center, or even more, if, if they travel to the center, they will start using the public transport. There are some strategies that to do that, but this is the basic idea first for the normalization stage. Thanks. Okay, and then that was the roads, and then what are the the, the USA uh, uh, model? Now this is what happened with the European model. First, we have the BRT bus rapid transit. It's taken from the uh, Latin American uh, way, and these are the main conjunction of the BRT. Thanks. And then this is the commuter line. So we have the bus and we have the trains with all the three uh, six conjunctions. Next. 
and then we if we put all that together we map we map which part that has the most conjunction because the most conjunction means the most economic uh, uh, economic activities which will support the low level uh, economy population because the population cannot go up or in so they have to live within this perimeter thanks the next one is the second stage of uh, certification that the, the previous one the first stage is that has something to do with the water flow the main water the main uh, thing and then the secondary rivers that goes through next and then we're looking at the branch where they are connected to the uh, uh, transportation system this uh, study is one of the ones that we have not developed yet uh, and this is mainly have to something to do with the, the, the location that we're going to provide for uh, uh, food production. Next. Okay, so what, what does those mean? Those means that uh, it's explained in the book, uh, in the ecological book, that we have to start expanding to forbidden geographies in a modern term, in western term. Because in the western term, you can't, you cannot uh, build something there is a, near the river or wherever or wherever. We have to change that because uh, what happens is the ecological issue then become a technical issue technical issue we can solve them because the engineering next because uh, this is somebody in japan they, they do that next and then uh, some more sample next and then uh, okay so these are the experimentation that we done in terms of design these are one of the earliest ones so uh, some of the, the very rough one normalization we do some of the uh, basic things next so what i find is that the idea is that once we stick the normalization uh, all the way until the end we can actually create instead of uh, uh, decreasing the, the, the urban structure we create new urban structure that can maintain the roads uh, as you see when you when we going to bandu uh, we pass to the main jakarta main road the suriman town you can see how how really dense it is, but by stacking it, and then of course there's a, a economical study for the uh, feasibility studies. Uh, that's uh, one of our ongoing research. That the idea is that by creating one of the the main thing, which is not sophisticated technology, this is just simple technology and cheap. We we don't we're not after like MRT or whatever the uh, that thing, but we can actually free the the sideways right, like this. Next, next, okay, and then uh, you get okay. and see the folder. Oh, wow. the video. This is one of the sample that we do for the sec. The next one is the certification uh, model, one of the earliest model. Uh, okay, so okay, despite of the fact that we are talking about. Uh, uh, transportation but we did actually we make a sample of a micro housing it's a very common thing now in the US Europe starting but some of the major city in US start to do this uh, micro housing projects especially in New York okay so very basic amenities very basic uh, but decent and in, in, in a way healthy and everything okay so what happened is that we can actually create this to create the neighborhoods. But as we talking about uh, forbidden geography, one of the way to do it is like this. Because we have, we need in, in order to 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 to, to imply for the uh, low level economy uh, population, we need to find uh, a location that is in the city center but have no economical values. And that's only on the uh, perimeter of forbidden geography, uh, above the railroads, uh, by the river, and even under the, uh, the bridge or whatever. And these are, of course, the, the location that has never been have any theory to stick about. And it's it's because if we're using the the Western perspective, this is out of the question. But again, this is uh, the reality. So. If, if we put on all those uh, three things, it become connected from economically to politically to the technical ecological aspect. Next. So uh, if, as we have this map, I'm going back to the very start, uh, but we actually next do 
always copy theories that were prepared only for this scale of the world. And where the rest, they never really thought about it in, in their truly, their sense way of uh, way of okay. Thank you. I don't have the, I sent you the, the, the breakdown of the 30%, but it's from farms still at farm fields, small scale logistics, farms. small scale farmers, of course, because that's still more than 80% of Indonesian farmers. I only relate to Indonesian farms, right? I cannot speak for any other countries because I don't have any knowledge about that. But it's from the farm, logistics, a lot is going wrong with logistics, packaging, uh, timing, also simple knowledge harvesting at the wrong time of day where there's a lot of already rotting on the field before it even reaches the first collector. Yeah. The supply chains are too long so it goes by collector, collector, collector. It's unrefrigerated because that's too expensive for small farmers so a lot is being wasted there. But yeah. even all the way down in at supermarkets in Indonesia, even though in principle they know good, of good cold chain supply, they are not practicing. So even if the vegetables are in, in, in a cool room, you can still see that the door is open because the staff finds it too cold if it's too. So there's a lot to gain there. Can I add to this? Yes, sure. You know, like I totally agree for empowering farmers. In the context of empowering farmers, I would like to talk about Uttarakhand experience, but coming to the wastage. In India also, a lot of wheat last year about wastage because India has right now produced it. You know, because India is making use of a lot of things, but has not at the same time prepared. India is, India is not prepared for the storage. So a lot of the food which was there was just wasted. Yeah. What happens in India? Look at the psyche of the farmer who is not empowered. If the farmer is not empowered, what actually happens? He is the one. He look at other people. He look at other people. How are other people gaining money? Everybody, in case if they are going into the farm, what they want ultimately they want to earn. So Can I you see? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice if you are in plenary session because the, there's no, I mean, the remaining session is ecology or economic uh, in this way. But if you wish, if you wish, you can move to the uh, plenary room. That's all. Well, it's going on. <laughs> more people, sorry. Oh, more, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, there are more people. <laughs> and more space and more people. No. Okay. Let's yeah, okay, let's, let's so here. anyway, if okay. you wish to move, it's yeah. uh, welcome. And then, okay. and then there are yes. you tell that uh, if anyone is interested, there are some spaces and they can. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what happens in India? <laughs> See, I love talking about a farmer, farmer, a farmer of Punjab. Punjab sorry, is in the very same. So then like you know, so uh say in Punjab, Punjab is one where the agriculture is the one predominant, you know, this thing. But what has happened in Punjab over the last few years, uh sons and most of the sons they either prefer to go to Australia or they prefer to go to Canada most of them are in Canada or in U United States so the elders in the family are not there only the elders are there in the farm you know back home only the elders are there so now what has happened there in the process now you know the concept what we call a suitcase farm what is suitcase farming? Suitcase farming is suitcase. where you're asking suitcase farming suitcase farming and what is this suitcase farming where, where, they, where you're being asked where the uh, where people where the labor is borrowed yeah, to yes. help in the field because sons are not there. Yeah, yes. So when you know so and then what is the thing? What do they grow there? They grow there. What is what is happening around them? So what is happening around them may not be best for that field. In the end, the owner of that field in of that agriculture field comes and he collects funds. He he collects money for that. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the best practices are not being followed. And for that, what do you need? We need to empower farm, we, we need to empower the owners of those fields, and which is just not happening. Say for example, last year, 
uh, till last year uh, people were growing till uh, till few years back people were growing uh, those crops which were which were needed by the people who wanted to eat they were like a food crops but now what has happened looking at himachal pradesh himachal pradesh is a region which is adjacent to punjab in himachal pradesh people were growing flowers and they were gaining lot many so what they instead of instead of growing the food crops they uh, on, the, on those alternative fields they decided to grow flowers for horticulture so that they can gain money yeah. so in the process what happened that agriculture production that wheat production which was coming from that particular site is now getting shorted as we know that one is to nine we are finding that people are not having enough food you know in the years to come and not only that coming to uttar pradesh in uttar pradesh what do we have is we have a money money order economy now what is this money order economy money order economy is where again men are not there it's only women who are there women are the one who are growing who are growing and it's largely subsistence economy which is there but because men are away men are only sending them less money there again those regions are being infiltrated by the commercial needs uh, of uh, by the commercial demands which are around them where people come and just they grow one and as a result what has happened is that the capacity of that particular land also gets spoiled and so they cannot grow till few years back whenever i was going to that region people were offering me potato whenever i was traveling through that and people were not finding it bad but now what has happened is that it's difficult to grow it's difficult to find because of all those other bad practices with the commercial farmers have provoked them to grow just in lieu of the fact that they gain more funds i got data which i will tell subsequently but i'm all for empowering farmers and empowering farmers in terms of training empowering farmers not in terms of the pilots sometimes it happens because you're getting a project in a particular region so what you do to prove that your pilot is a good practice project you just uh, create a practice which others follow but which is not best for the region because you want to prove the you prove it as a pilot to be the correct program Yeah. Oh. Okay. My. Uh, yes. Uh, I agree that uh, we should be empowered the, the, the farmers, uh, like uh, say it also, uh, as you say. But uh, I think it's uh, another uh, fundamental about the uh, security is our public policy in the Indonesia context. Uh, even we have to try uh, <coughs> a lot of the model pilot uh, in uh, several community. Uh, like in paddy community, also in uh, vegetable community. Uh, empowerment, empower, we, we, we doing uh, the transfer technology also from uh, university. But in case uh, we uh, we saw the the, the, the farmer is uh, in Indonesia, in Indonesia, the power is uh, not, not changed in the economical uh, aspect. So uh, I think the, 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 the interesting uh, should be we talk also about the policy uh, in, in in the agriculture and food, food uh, issue because without that uh, uh, even we, we have a strong uh, uh, strong uh, 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 strong power partners uh, when we we not know to make sure the policy is uh, supported this our uh, this our uh, uh, approach is, is in Indonesia context uh, in ten year uh, for the, the example in ten year uh, I noted the the in facing the welfare of the the farmers is just zero point seven point it's not it's not it's not meaning nothing not me not not and not mean in in, in, in in Indonesia case because the the farmer is still today in Indonesia is still the lowest uh, the the um, Structure. Uh, structure, in structure, it's very, very poor, mm -hmm. very poor uh, 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 statistic below data shown in Indonesia yeah. Yeah. in 10 years. And um, what kind of policy that could support those farmers to empower them, which you, you have in mind? Yes, in my mind, this, this question is uh, on the, uh, like what I said, mm -hmm. uh, it's the fact of the uh, food security paradigm. I think because the, the food security is in my mind is the very very uh, close with the market so when we talk about the market uh, just on the uh, profit just profit or in the, the orientation not in not not in uh, uh, welfare of the partner 
So I think uh, so we we should be talk uh, also about the sovereignty. So policy should be maybe uh, Pakistan with your research can also uh, answer to us how the the sovereignty uh, can be another way to the empower uh, people uh, farmers and also increasing production and the uh, the right of the farmer is also fulfilled. Well, as I mentioned to you earlier, that uh, most of our research is focused on what's so called the landscape approach. So it means that we, we see the spatial of our landscape when trying to analyze a certain uh, issue. In this case, and we, when we see uh, food security, we see that at least there are four related issues on food security. Mm -hmm. The first one is about the balance between supply and demand. So it might be there are some uh, problems with supply. For example, as we know that I was in Chihera in uh, what's Java uh, several days ago, and then I could see that farmers they threw out this uh, chabe, the mm -hmm. chili, chili, because they said that now uh, once in Lebanon it was very expensive, but now it's very uh, very cheap. Then uh, and then it is his farm was on the top of the hill and then the transportation fee is too, too expensive to bring down to the market. So it means the first one is whether supply and demand can be balanced. The second one is about the access to supply of food, which may, uh, that may be it's not affordable for the poor. Maybe this is the problem at the very urban or the slum area in the city. And the third one is that the utilization of supply itself for generating human benefits. And here we talk about the nutrition, the health, stunting, and all of the malnutrition kind of case, which is the consumption intake for women and children. And then the fourth one is about the sovereignty of decision making in, in terms of the production system. Because as we know that there are many cases where a farmer was somehow through the policy of the government being pushed to plant certain commodity, which is not under their, <laughs> which is not maybe it's not their wish to, to, to do so, and then uh, also at, it's not. I think it's not only happening at the formal levels, but it also happening at the national level, because for example now we as the developing countries, Asia and Africa, we are classified as green countries, right? With lots of forest protection and da da da. However, at the global level, we also pressure, and there are some pressure to us, our developing countries, to keep greens. Well, in somehow, we also need some uh, space for development. Mm -hmm. So as you know, that we have conflicts on lands, we, uh, our oil palm uh, production were, I think, perceivably being illegal without any really gratification how illegal our products are, or, how, or how legal our products at the international market. I think uh, somehow we cannot also blame that all Indonesian oil farm is illegal, for example. There should be a more transparent and also um, fair game at the international level uh, for the sovereignty in this case. Um, that's an important aspect uh, <coughs> but, the, but there are two things one is production is on the decline not necessarily because farmers are disempowered that might be one aspect of it but they're also nested and a part of a system which has you know historically and currently being uh, under prioritizing farm and agriculture development and so we I, I think that we need to understand why there is this empowerment, why there is low yields and low production, and not just leave it all to the farmers and their decisions. So that's one thing. And the second thing is, I think the food security, I'm not necessarily a food security person, but uh, someone from a, sort of a political science background looking at the debate 
it seems like a lot of focus is on production and how to increase production and how to feed 9 billion people who are poor, but actually the issue is that of distribution, that you know people lack command over food, command over affordable food that is readily available. Part of that, part of that reason is because they're not producing. Part of that reason is they're not commanding the food, and part of that reason is because they're substituting uh, food for sort of bad quality food. Um, and I think the distribution issue is 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 quite is very very real, and it's 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 visible at multiple levels. Um, and um, from my perspective, it's particularly visible at how. Uh, food is allocated within the household. But, um, you know, at our earlier session, we had um, we watched a video about food distribution, or you know, food distribution, or social programs geared at food distribution in India. And one of the primary sort of target groups were children. And why is that? The, the, the rationality or the thinking behind it is because girl children in particular don't have command over food to the same extent that boys, boy children do at the household level. So there needs to be certain mechanisms to address that. And I think that we are sort of, you know, the, the India example is a, is a really good example of recognition that distribution is an issue and, and, and doing something about it, but it also feels like the debate is far too much on production, wasted, which are very important issues, don't get me wrong, but I think it kind of distracts or detracts attention from, from the structures in which food production is occurring on the one hand and on distribution of the food. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that brings me actually now to the level of policy. I mean, different different um, aspects were, were emerging. On uh, starting with empowerment, but then yeah, would you do that with training? Um, but then it, it, you link that to uh, yeah, to uh, to shaping conditions for uh, for increasing access to food or to, to resources, uh, then you would, or you may then end up in, at the policy level. Uh, another thing is also waste. Waste of well, yeah, everything with distribution is related to waste as well. Yes. Because not yeah. the wasted products could have been distributed. And yeah. it's because the, the, the logistical line distribution is going to certain areas where people don't can eat it or don't buy it or they sell yeah. too much, it's not available elsewhere. Next to the fact that the girls and boys maybe don't have the same access, in, not in Indonesia, I feel, but, but it's also they, 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 they don't, undernourishment and malnourishment are also two things, because yeah. Indonesia, Indonesians don't like to eat vegetables, for example, <laughs> even if they are fed. I'm not Indonesian, but not, yeah? if I am somewhere with a pharmacist as well, they don't eat that much vegetables. So. They don't eat fruits as well. I'll take you to another extreme. I'll take you to another extreme of pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals are also happening. You know, so that's another thing in case if you're talking with, see ultimately what are we saying, in case if you want food production, we have to decide, you're talking with the policies, either those policies may come from the top, or there are those structures which we evolve so that at the grassroots level, people adopt those uh, policies, you know, which may work, but in India what is happening even in Punjab and even in Andhra Pradesh, there's a number rampant of farmer suicides. See, we are seeing farmer suicide, that means farmer means what? That means that person who's having land or who wants to work on land in an agricultural practice. So why is it happening? That means what is the need today is the support system. We need to evolve a support system. Support system so that, and support system in terms of knowledge, know-how, support system in terms of technology, that is something which is so very important and they help from the state. Whether the state is ready to go deep down or there are too many people who are in between. What she talked about the redistribution was that on which both ways, even at the takeoff stage, in case if we want something to be grown. But what happens because of the media or because of the allurement of earning quickly, too quickly? As for example, if you plant eucalyptus tree, people are not bothered so much about that particular field. And plus, the other thing, and today in India, we were not at Indira, in Indira Gandhi's time when it was their food, uh, 
food gain programs and all those were there very much there. But now we do not have so many of them because we should all understand that we have to bring technology to the farmers. And that can only happen with the carrying capacity. Remote sensing, as all of you know, is something that is uh, that is obtaining information of object, area and phenomena from distance. Our space application center in Ahmedabad, and the moment you make curves, the way you all must have seen those curves in the, like, you know, in the, uh, say, in the hospitals, in case if the crop is dying. So today in the computer at home sitting, we have to just make that available so that just sitting and making use of remote sensing data, we all can come to know that this crop is dying now. So this crop needs help, this crop needs support. So in I, case if, yes. I so agree, I, but in how much, whose role and responsibility is that? Policy or researchers? I, I strongly said. feel policy is not the solution. I mean, still, okay, the, the demand, and there's too much product related, but demand is leading, and the private sector has to gain as well by knowledge transfer to small, smaller farmers. Because a lot of the waste, for example, to private sector, they also want continuous supply. They want to have good product. So only making policy, forcing farmers to do this or that, or uh, trying to promote things with farmers or private sector, that's not that's not going to change much. It's private sector money. Somebody said it's all about money. Yeah, it is all about money. But so also the, the, on the demand side, I think the private sector should be much more uh, 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 approached and and for shared value projects because it will help them as well make even more money if they help more of the small farmers. Only with <coughs> policy and with the universities, that, but without private sector. I don't yes. think there's much change. But, but as with just one line and then I'll give it to you. You know the private sector, the moment you add, I just remember Mahatma Gandhi's quote. There's enough for man's need, but we do not have no, we do not have enough for man's greed. Moment you add private sector, for me that greed also is another thing which enters and then what will happen to those you know, what will happen to that space? There is a new right? type of private yes. sector coming coming up now. It's not all private sector only uh, only wanting to destroy the world because that's not sustainable for their own money as well. So the private sector I think play a role in especially in horticulture. Mm. Staple food for example rice I think is not so big uh, but in Indonesia any business contact. And for discussing food security I think we have to some level of food security in this uh, production, distribution, also consumption, what level we have to discuss this, we can do Yes. Now, just in three levels, we discuss. Oh, uh, discuss. In three levels. Because <laughs> you are uh, talking about distribution, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, it, I, I, I mentioned about uh, the policy. In Indonesia case, uh, Ibu Tov melihat juga yeah. the Indonesia case. For example, the, the government is uh, launching the program uh, UPSUS, UPSUS, UPAYA UPSUS. Mm -hmm. This year. This year. Uh, this year's uh, special uh, effort, effort for to increase the the production of the rice, uh, soybean, and also corn. What the government uh, doing? They allocated uh, allocated a lot of uh, budget on this project, in this program. Uh, the, the government uh, supply the farmer uh, seed, uh, hybrid side, uh, hybrid seed, corn seed, uh, soybean seed, also uh, rice seed, and also the fertilizer. A chemical fertilizer, also the mechan mechanical equipment uh, like a tractor and the others. Harvester. Harvester and, and the others. Uh, so, uh, I mentioned the, 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 the policy because when the uh, we have invest to empower the the, the, the community, but uh, suddenly government send the the project the program, and the government say you should be use this project because Indonesia need your effort to increase the production. So I, in my, in my side, it's, it's the problem. It's the, the fundamental problem because the sub sovereignty of the farmers, sustainability of the empowerment uh, is, is the end. When the, the government come with the difference, difference uh, perspective, right, in the, in the Indonesia case. Uh, also when the government using the, the top-down model and also the high the, uh, uh, technology also high Hate the output, uh, extra input, is the problem with the ecology. In in Indonesia, uh, Pak Surya mentioned in 2007, right, Pak Surya? We have to uh, uh, around in 20, 
for uh, district in Java, and we uh, we we research the, the the soil condition. You know what happened uh, in the ten years? Uh, organic matter in the our land is just only 0.2 0 0.2 percent percent. It's very low. Why? Because the the, the, the ideal ideal content is 2.5 2.5 organics. I think it's, it's the problem also. Uh, in the, in the, 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 not only in the production uh, 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 level, also in the in the distribution and consumption. You can imagine how how we can uh, consumption something growing by the lot of external input, the chemical uh, use like it, in vegetable, also in, in, in rice, in soybean, also in, in corn. It's, it's, I think this is problem for Indonesia. I don't know uh, with the others. Here. Up your uh, statement. Well, I agree uh, that somehow agriculture can contribute in environmental the degradation. However, maybe for something like this, uh, something very uh, global, we should be really a bit careful on this because we need to be kind of fair because we also know that there are some farmers that are care, they, are, they, they care for the health of their uh, environment. For example, uh, maybe we need also to save a bit our mind that farmers is not only planting annual crops, but also farmers that planting agroforestry systems, for example, with less somehow less, less inputs, input. yeah, and then with a quite extensive production system. And there are also farmers uh, agroforestry itself can it can be like very simple, like uh, early cropping. You, it's like in blender, yes. it's very uh, <laughs> Small uh, strap, three strap, three strap, or something like that. Or we can be like see in Indonesian's kind of style, and everything is mixed in one yes. one system. So my point is that here, when we try to mention about environmental degradations um, caused by agriculture, we need also to fairly say that there are some farming system that can be kind of uh, intermediary and also can support and provide ecosystem services which is one of them is including the extensive agroforestry system for example just addition and also even for rice i think because i did uh, a research on the green agriculture and see the environmental aspect of um, this uh, somehow i found some research although it's really really old saying that uh, if uh, farmers keeps the local uh, variety um, yes. it has much much lower emissions compared to the hybrid Fighting, right? So I mean, knowing like the context of the farming system itself, we need to be really careful when putting a statement that agriculture can destroy the environment. Mm -hmm. But it has to, again yeah. has to do with knowledge transfer exactly. yes. of, of the farmers. Yeah. Can I just yeah. bring another note when we come to the environment? Looking at the climate change that's taking place, my experience for the last four years, I've been continuing going to Himalayas to cut the glacier and all that glacier but I was working on a climate change project dealing with the retreating glaciers and I found that all those people who are living, I'm talking to the region Guttu, Guttu is in Uttarakhand, it's in the northern part of India and where I conducted three workshops and the focus group meetings mm -hmm. and I found that those farmers who are there, they are, for them we may talk about the climate change, we may say that the glaciers are retreating, mm -hmm. they are knowing that the pahar is retreating and you know this is Lal Pahar but they are, for them, those basic needs are not getting fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So they are not aware about the climate change happening and the impact is going to happen to them. You know, so those people, the ones who are near glaciers, mm -hmm. for them, the, for the ones who are there in the uphill regions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and of course we know that upstream and downstream linkages are so strong. Okay. So those farmers, the ones who are living there, and besides, as I told you, that that part of the region is the one just totally dependent on money order economy. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is men are outside. It's only women who are there. So that women, we are talking about climate change in forums and we're talking about carbon footprints and we're wanting to make an eco spaces and using all that better technology. Yeah. Even, I, even I advocate for that, the use of Modi's data, etc, etc. But those people who are there, my students, when I took my students as I teach in a college, for the last four years I've been consecutively going there, those people are just climate change. No, this is like that. So now this year, as I said, earlier they were, they were offering me Potatoes is free of course, you know, to eat and they were helpful and we thought they are warm, warm rural people. But today they are also like that warm rural people, the ones which were there, because their basic needs are not getting fulfilled. 
they are also like you know in pockets courtesy those projects which come to them because of one funding which has come those you know that small pockets which courtesy those pilots i am not against i am all for public private partnerships but sometimes it happens that we all also have to take the other things into an account when we are talking about the production production is a good word and if we talk because we need food production we need people to have we have subsistence but in those three what i'm saying is that awareness programs that's the reason when we started off with we have to do in case if we're talking about the food production i agree completely but awareness programs are also important for some of the private sector not all for example pesticide companies is a little bit different but awareness for climate change farmers if you if you do research we do a baseline research most farmers small farmers they mix up to four five six different pesticides in one spray in tank right this is similar with fertilizer they just use too much because they're not aware they think all oh, the youth is going down the more pesticide i use the better it will go which is of course opposite it's not true at all so it all has to do with awareness but that's also important for the private sector that want to have good quality safe products to sell so private sector is also they also benefit from that awareness not all private sector but there are private sector companies now that are more and more aware about that as well i'm happy and that's all yeah yeah so i'd like to, to go into the, the public policy space and that's why i'm looking at you uh but, but you have, uh, yes exactly not, okay Uh, one thing. You first. Yes, one thing. Uh, another thing is when we talk about the uh, production, also uh, and and uh, food security, also food security context. Uh, in your in your situation, uh, the other thing should be we, we think about the the uh, landholders, uh, the the farmers uh, level, because in Indonesia a lot of the not 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 farmer actually they are the peasant. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we are also now entering into the public policy space, but more also related to rights, farmer rights. Uh, <coughs> about the market. empowerment, uh, one thing uh, worth mentioning is about the tenure and security, the access to land. Yeah. As we, uh, the data shows that landless peasants are numerous in especially Java, and access to land is Tenure security, the, the agrarian law, the uh, land law is biased towards the urban people mm. because it's still based on the thinking about private ownership and it is suitable for urban landscape but not suitable for mm. rural areas. So the tenure security is less for farmers than for urban people. So the development of land law is more biased towards uh, urban people. And you're saying, uh, sorry, just repeat what you just said. The land law, uh, also the inheritance is much more to rural. For urban people, it's more suitable for urban people. So ownership, uh, legality of ownership. And also the, the the amount of land to be uh, owned is more suitable for urban areas than for rural. And the the government has not yet has not yet uh, come with good policies how to regulate ownership for farmers. Also, uh, the situation in India also of course in Indonesia. Less people wants to be in farming. Yeah. People are migrating to urban areas, and so what's left in pockets of rural areas are women and children. So the men are going to the cities. 
and this is especially true for Java. And it's also related to the development planning. Uh, there's a national planning and every ministry has its own planning. Yes, that is with own targets and yes. <laughs> Okay, you have national and provincial yeah, yeah. Uh, as well. And different yeah. bureaucrats changing <laughs> positions means different plannings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of the district autonomy, each, each district wants to be autonomous and becomes more urbanized, more quickly urbanized, uh, with farmers being the uh, disadvantage yeah, yeah. position. If I may link your expertise with, with what you were saying earlier about um, a landscape approach to food security, and then relate that to the policy level of station planning. How, how would be your, your input on this? Would it be effective to, to develop an eco-region based policy for food security? Then we have to also change the structure of the government because what we formally think is more autonomy at the district level will uh, increase sovereignty. Also, uh, may link people directly to the government, so farmers will have more voice. But the result so far has been more urbanization and farmers becoming more marginalized. So, eco-region approach doesn't fit well with the uh, with the policy of decentralization. So we have to change the the whole government. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> 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 but I agree. Eco and decentralization it has two different concepts, yes. isn't it? Yes. I mean, eco region is seeing a landscape in terms of ecosystem similarity, yes. Yes. while decentralization it leads to the administrative boundary yes. of the. And it neglects, it doesn't look at the origins at all. Well, I think the problem here is because there are different scale of spatial planning. Because, for example, I just met with the Minister of Environment uh, yesterday. Environment and Forestry. forestry. Environment and Forestry. No. Yesterday. <laughs> and what really happening here, because at the national level, they have 2,500 250,000 scale maps for eco-regions. <laughs> well, at the district level, what they need for their operational is 50,000. No, maybe less than that. One to 10,000. Maps. Exactly. Maps are required. Exactly. And then, uh, how can the district understand and translate what the national government has to their operational level? Hmm. Then the gap is there. Well, now, as you know, you know more better than me, but at the national, at the district level, what they can do is hire consultants. Mm. <laughs> that may not be. I don't think right. every consultant is bad. <laughs> However, and what happens is that there is like a similar report with a copy paste, and a similar city goes to different district, and then it becomes a very formal, like a formal uh, submission. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because why? Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure, it again goes to the decentralization kind of issue that maybe during the decentralization process, there is also, you know, again, the increased credible capability of the district governments to do this spatial planning issue. Yeah, I'd just like to take the same, you know, she, she talked about the eco space. And, yeah. See, there are problems, and there are real, genuine problems. The problems are because say a watershed or any eco space is not going you know in the congruence of your administrative space yes. administrative boundaries are different yeah. but money is flowing in those administrative exactly. boundaries yes, yeah. like say for example <laughs> I, I understand yes. the whole system it's like you know it's a country is a nation then you have states in india i'm talking then you have districts then you have tehsils then you have blocks then you have village so the, and that's where you know we live in China, you know, but your eco space or the watershed, a river basin, will not go and agree with your administrative boundaries. And the maps which we have, even otherwise, also is one is to two fifty thousand. You're right, absolutely. But now we have one is 
that is the reason why I am saying I just always would like to request each one of you that today technology, remote sensing that is there is not a bad tool. Make use of yeah, that sure. because because imageries yeah. don't lie. And you know using that, you know, I mean imageries don't lie. But people do not want imageries to be used because they do not want truth to come out. Because you know, whatever you see, yeah. see today you're getting imagery of 0 0.6 meters. Mm. You can see everything that's there on the land. Why can't you find ways of giving that map of 0 0.6 meter to the farmer as it is, as it's there, and then after every 11 days you're getting that map. So the change detection Sorry. also can Sima. be done. Sorry. Uh, yes. Can I get the yes. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, Sima, on, I, I, I completely understand and appreciate the importance of GIS and and spatial, whatever. But uh, having said that, I mean, real life and and what those maps tell are sometimes very, very different things. They don't tell you who owns what land and who lives in it and who makes claims on it. And you know, just by handing out maps is, is really not the solution either. I mean, it is a big part of it, but then... See, that's the first layer. Add emotions to it. Add more layers to it. Make use of farmer. I, I agree it's very important, but then you have to scale it back down again to where the business is happening with the farmers. I wanted to add one other element, especially in Indonesia where most of the farms, about 8% percent only half hectare. Wow. Yeah. 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 They're the only thing of changing things, even if they would have the knowledge, even if they would have all the maps and all the structure, is if they work together. Because in the global market, to, 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 to be able to have uh, considerable food uh, flows, you need some kind of economies of scale. I'm not thinking about big, right? Yes. Even 30 farmers, if they work together, they can have a much more efficient... So regardless, if they have the knowledge, if they have the plans, farm and empowerment for me, one of the most important things from my project is they have to work together as groups. And at the moment, they don't. They have from Bhaktani Dissini, which are only formed because then they can get free inputs from the government, which is fantastic. <laughs> but it does, it's not, it's it's really not, it's not yeah. proper, it's not proper grouping. Because based on that free uh, inputs, they are not being taught how to do continuous supply, planting schedule. Yeah. So what you said with the peppers, they get all my seed or chabe the soft seed, and they all grow it at the same time, cannot sell it, it's being wasted, yeah. does not end up at the right persons who need food. So, that, that cooperation, that, that group, that's very, very important in addition to technical knowledge of cooperation yeah. and in addition to having those kind of structures. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, small farmers are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe to, to the, this issue, um, the tension between uh, landscape based or eco region based uh, focus on food security and the administrative boundaries. So the, what would be the solution? I mean, well, <laughs> politicians think short term. You said you you would throw a throw out. Oh, redraw the administrative uh, boundaries. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's hypothetical. Oh, where is race? Which is just because possible. the Ministry of Forestry use also uh, eco region approach, the yes. watershed. Yes. But then. Uh, they cannot implement their policies because there's this administrative in different, it's different. So there's a tension, and I don't know how to solve this issue because we have to then to redraw the boundaries or the restructure the government. See, the problem to that is, in case if you actually want, then you have to micro scale the whole gambit of your discussion. Micro scale means, say for example, it's a watershed which you said. A is the river basin, a huge one. We've got a, we've got a first order basin and a second order and a third order. Start start finding your things at a small level. Make groups, what you suggested, is the only thing that can happen. So that those boundaries where the fund allocation is, it has to go to the village level. The small small space it is, your eco space is also, then you can just, you know, you can manage them. But we do not want to do that. Why we do not want to do that? Because everything is linked also with the money that percolates deep down and the policy structure which are forced. Yeah. 
we may not want it, but those groups yeah. what she is advocating, what she is addressing is absolutely right. Yeah. We need to activate them, we need to... But we activate the groups in connection with the trade, with the private sector. So that's why I said it's not impossible to have benefits also no, the private sector. I'll just qualify that. We are talking about the good private sector. <laughs> so I'll call it. But is there, is there, this is global, right? This is the global south. So yeah, most yeah, of the yeah. discussion is on India and Indonesia. And I don't have knowledge, okay. but you're from an international organization. You ask, what could be the solutions? Are there any other countries where they already found a solution for these kind of things? Well, I think the key is about the nested, nested coordinations. Because somehow, for example, uh, if the district has similar watershed, but there is something uh, which is a higher administrative level that should be able to coordinate, which is the provincial level. And the province, for sure, there should be the country as the governance of environmental uh, natural resource, natural resources, right? So, and I mean, if you go a bit uh, to the smaller scale. Farmers with farmer groups and then farmer groups with village with a business group. I mean there should be some understanding the relations, nested relations between the smaller scale until at the national level. And for sure at the national level, if we see Earth as the unit, there should be like a coordination between countries, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean in the ideal world. Yeah, in the ideal world it should come now. Yeah. Because we are talking we need to go to the ideal. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is the coordination is a long time of problem. Process. Process. I think if, uh, government uh, in uh, region protection, uh, they, they push the making of one map. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But actually, to, until now, the, the, the progress of the uh, I heard uh, uh, the, pro, the, the progress of the one map uh, Indonesia is not, not very good. Uh, even maybe co coordination is good, but uh, don't forget the, when, the, when the coordination is the politics, is the political aspect. So it's it's a really big problem. Coordination is the yeah. political aspect. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Until yeah. Like, yeah. 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 We're talking about it's 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 it. But that's the reality. You're right. Yeah. 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 In, Indonesia, in Indonesia. You can imagine uh, uh, the BPN uh, said uh, 2.3 uh, million hectares uh, uh, yeah. agriculture yeah. area is convert a conversion to the other's uh, purpose. But who who do the, the conversion is the uh, district government. With the RTRW, yeah, uh, yes, yes, this political process. It's, 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 a, it's a legal <laughs> process. It's a legal process. So, what is the solution? Until now, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because yeah. we, has, we have tried to hold, to engage the legislative also about this problem. We engage with the uh, executive uh, also, that government. It's, it's not working. I don't know. Maybe here, can tell. Well, maybe from the research perspective, actually what we need now, we are what we are doing now is provide options. I mean, for example, we know that trade-off between environment and conservation is the one that we believe um, really kind of a political issue. Whether you want to make it your district greener or add more money into your pocket. Uh, the government money, for example. So I think for, uh, because uh, this is uh, from the recent institute perspective, what we can do is like provide their options and trade off. Uh, for example, this is what happens if you change everything to brown area, yeah. and then this is what happens if you there's green area. Then I think it goes to what's called the pico economics, the behavior and then the willingness, good wills, and those of things that will be. And of not only uh, uh, should be, uh, it, this should not be neglected because I mean, this our president say what the policy matter? <laughs> I mean, that individual willingness to change, yeah. that yeah. I think that would be one of but the key. And there are also a difference between the short term policy yes. and the long term exactly. policy yeah. because yeah. The, even in long term, the options are very clear, short term is. 
Yeah. I personally feel now with the climate change coming, let's just talk about, you know, are we prepared? Are we prepared to that reality? Is farmer prepared to that reality? Mm. Is he aware? Yeah. Or, or, or are the private people aware? No, 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 not all private. I'm not private. Private people. I'm just wanting to see what Sibas is. Yes, yes, yes. I think what, what, what she just said is a good point. Yeah? And, and, and uh, Mare. Yeah. So the tension between short term and long term. Yes, and climate change also. Very yes, important. exactly. There is also closely linked to, to climate change. And how, how yeah. Uh, Bailey, I'm looking at you. <laughs> oh, okay, you think I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> how, would, how would you provide uh, policymakers with, with scientific evidence mm -hmm. so that they can develop our scale of This is just uh, this is too much, too sh uh, sh short term thinking, and that they have to uh, replace that. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you mean with the short term? I mean, uh, the scientific evidence can, I mean, it, I mean yeah. there is, yeah, there are some, that can be <laughs> long term, okay, the short term, it depends. I mean, it depends the scale of time of analysis, right? <laughs> I mean, policymakers, they tend to think in short term. Ah, so they uh, probably some periods of yeah. four years because they are in common yeah. district. But if you want to, to make, let's say, overlay, uh, uh, space with, with a original space. Then you, yeah, I would say that you then have to make politicians aware that they should not only think in terms of four periods or four, four periods. So how would you, as scientists, well, make them aware? Yeah, actually, what we do is this talent for in development. Yeah, research in development, not R and D, not research and development, but research in development. So it means that, um, for example, uh, yeah, to I mean, I I said it, yeah, I didn't say this is a group, uh, uh, a successful group, but we are still working on it. However, what we want we want to do is that uh, usually we work at different level, so we uh, work at the local level with the farmers, with the district. And we also work at the national level because we know that if district and farmer they are more dynamic at the national level. However, uh, somehow I mean, and all, all that what we want to do is also to tap into what so called the long term development plan, which is the 25 years. Right. So it means that just in case there are some changing in case, uh, in in of the parliaments or the cabinet. There are some inputs at the longer level with which is the uh, long term development plan. In English, it's called uh, Rencana Pembangunan Jangka Panjang. Yeah. So that's what we are trying to target. First, we work at the multiple scale, and the second one, we try to target the policy makers, Kapenas mostly, and also with the sub sectoral, like uh, uh, depending on the thematic, the KLHK with the agriculture. Uh, to ensure that we can uh, target into this RPGM. Uh, RPGM. Uh, and and yeah. the RPGM. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There are too many applications in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, that's what we are uh, working on. Yeah, yeah. Possibly, perhaps, also as a researcher. Yeah, it's related to the climate change. I'm aware of a lot of research that uh, found that agricultural. Uh, area is very much in the green food security, decreasing of food production because of due to uh, <coughs> more frequency and severity of flood and drought. Flood and drought. Mm -hmm. And the second is also the outbreak, the frequency and severity of pests and diseases. And also in horticulture, that you concern like. Some uh, some disease very uh, the epidemic is very very uh, yeah. severe. It's like for example in Chile, Chabi, mm -hmm. yeah. big gumu fires. You can imagine in whole central Java, from Magulang to Banjarnegara to all infected by what is what we call big gumu virus. This is 
uh, the new kind of virus that emerging in last uh, maybe five or seven years. This, is, this new kind of disease, this uh, epidemic of plant-based and this is also the sev more severe of uh, drought and flood. Maybe after long drought this year, next yeah. next year this is uh, we have to prepare to flood. Yeah, yeah, more flat, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is. This is in uh, this climate change for to anti to what is to adapt <coughs> to adaptation of the climate change is we one in if we focus on agriculture <coughs> and agriculture field eco ecosystem what is agroecosystem resilient is very important yeah in if climate change combined with uh, less resilient agri agroecosystem makes worse and worse uh, situation makes uh, what for example uh, large scale of uh, flood large scale of uh, 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 pest on bridges can I uh, yes. uh, uh, what uh, it's intense or in short duration, long duration. In those days, uh, you know, uh, even I mean, the difficulties of now days and the difficulties of those days, I am trying to make it understand to all of you that the frequency has not changed. It was more frequent uh, in certain areas, even now, those frequencies is more. So you're saying, saying that the climate is not changing? Uh, there is no other evidence. We have to find out good evidence. So yes. you know. Right now we are debating on the food security system. So that is, I mean... That's right, yeah. So, so how to get a good indicator that the climate is really changing to be able for food security and threatening the population in India, for example. I mean, everywhere. Western food and all that, but still, uh, whether due to climate change or it is the seasonal occurrence of not, not change. Change. you mean it's not there is no climate change? No, no, I don't say that. It is the evidence tells me, so we have to look for more concrete evidence so that we can okay. treat for. This is I, I think uh, I step, yeah. Yeah. Yes. we have to pinpoint, but I think it's a general a consensus on this table that there is climate change. Yeah, and that we start. Yes. 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 The general consensus, right. mm -hmm. and based on there, we like to. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Because a lot of the flooding sometimes is climate change, but sometimes on hills and stuff, yes. flooding yes. is not. Yes. Right. It's 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 not it's it's not because of the deforestation. Yeah. So, so sometimes it's a yeah. Yeah, flash floods are because of that. Cloud bursting will happen. This, you know, this is not. I'm very sorry. We have to wrap up. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and and <laughs> some some new wrap up because of the tragedy. Yeah. And we have also to allocate some time for um formulating our own. Sure, sure. Please call me with the. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your input. Okay. Yes, so much. Can I? Thank you. 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 Thank you.